Welcome to all, all of you from San Francisco, all parts of California, and even across the Pacific, especially from Japan. Are you ready? Are your hearts ready to receive what the Lord has for you this morning? I hope so. I hope you are. Then let's receive what the Lord has for you, for us. Will you bow in prayer with me? Great God and our physician and our healer, make us aware of your great spirit here in this place. Touch and heal our brokenness and lift us out of despair and doubt. Dry our tears, pain and sorrow. Comfort and nourish us with the many blessings of your love, O God. May we flourish and blossom in the warmth and compassion of your healing love and grace. We thank you and honor you and glorify your name. Amen. Good morning. Hope all of you had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend last week. Last week, we learned how we are to live for God by not living for human desires. And we talked about the three different categories that relate to this. We talked about sexual immorality, drunkenness, and idolatry. And today, we will focus on how we are to glorify God. And what that looks like. So let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 to verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 to verse 9. Peter says, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober minded for prayer. Above all, maintain constant love for one another since love covers a multitude of sins be hospitable to one another without complaining so peter tells all christians the end of all things is near we talked last week about Jesus coming back to judge each one of us, whether it is Christians or non-Christians. And Peter now says, that time is near. And I know a lot of us, and including myself, we've been waiting, and we're still waiting. But the Bible says the end of all things is near near. So what is the response of knowing that the end is near? Is it to be anxious? Is it to panic? Is it to isolate ourselves from everyone? Peter answers prayer. We are to be alert and sober-minded for prayer until Jesus comes back or until we die and go to heaven, whichever comes first. The Bible says we are to be alert, meaning we must be ready at all times. And we should be sober-minded, meaning to be earnest. So what Peter is saying is that the knowing that the end of all things is approaching, is coming soon. We need to be ready and earnest for prayer. And until that time comes, the one thing we need to focus on is loving one another. Peter says, above all, meaning 
our first priority. Especially as we suffer during hardships, we are to maintain constant love for one another. Think about this. Whenever we pray, whenever you're praying, how often do you pray for the people that you do not love? Do you pray for God to help you to love one another? Do you ever ask God in your prayers to help you to love people? Do you ask God to love even the people who you may consider to be your enemies, the one that is causing you sufferings in your life? Do you pray for them? Think about it. I don't know if you ever realized this, but this is the greatest, one of the greatest commandments that Jesus asked us to do. Love one another. Jesus said in John chapter 13, and this is in verse 34 to 35, says, this is what he commanded his disciples the night before he was crucified. And he says, I give you a new command. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. So knowing that when we love one another, non-Christians, unbelievers, they will know we are disciples of Jesus. People will know we are followers of Jesus. And because we are followers of Jesus, we are to love one another. Now, why is that so important? Peter explains, love covers a multitude of of sins. Only by being disciples of Jesus, being followers of Jesus, when we love others, this will cover a multitude of sins. Now we need to be careful with this statement. This does not mean that our acts of love for each other can earn God's forgiveness. It doesn't mean that we are paying off our sins or erasing our sins through our good works by loving one another. That's not what Peter is saying here. You know, the word cover here in this, in this verse, in the Greek, it means to forgive. Peter says we are to maintain constant love because when we love one another, it also shows forgiveness. Because forgiveness is associated with love. Now, every so often, Christians will come up to me and admit that they were offended because... They would go out of their way to show kindness to other people. But those people were not kind back to them. And I remember a Christian brother, he had told me, I would call them when they were sick or when they were lonely. But when I was sick and when I was lonely, they didn't call me. They didn't even email me. And another had told me, I wanted to love them by, by giving them small gifts or food. But I received nothing from them. And I really wanted to show love to them, but they didn't show love back to me. And because even Christians can get bitter about 
practice. Yes, even Christians. When, when they constantly try to show love, or when we try to constantly show love, but do not get anything back in return, we, we end up being bitter. And because of that, we refuse to forgive them. Because we just can't let it go. Now, I want us to understand something, Christians. If this is how we feel, the problem is not them. The problem is us. Because true biblical love is sacrificial love. It's about the benefit of others. Biblical love does not expect paybacks. It does not expect returns for something you did for someone. If we are expecting paybacks, then the true object of our love is not them. It's ourselves. The reason we are bitter is not because we love them. The reason we are angry is because we love ourselves. And we also want them to love us too. And the truth is, when occasions like this happens, they don't need to ask for forgiveness. Because they haven't committed any sins. Because we're the ones who have committed a sin. And we're the ones who need to ask God for forgiveness. Because we have sinned. For biblical love does not take offense. It covers the offense of others. It's for the benefit of others. And Peter reminds us, this is what we need to focus on. Love one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. So Peter says we are to love one another. The question is, how? Peter explains in verse 9. He says, be hospitable to one another without complaining. Peter says, be hospitable to one another. Now, a, a lot of Christians would presume this sort of hospitality would be, for example, uh, having people over for dinner or even hosting fellow Christian brothers and sisters to some sort of gathering. And those could be examples of hosp hospitality. But in Peter's day, Christian hospitality was a much greater need. And also had the potential to be a great burden as well. And because for one thing, many Christians were forced, remember, they were forced to flee persecution. And as Christians were being persecuted, they relied on other Christians who were living in other towns or regions to share their home and food. And as the, the, these persecuted Christians passed through from one town to another, these other Christians accepted them to their home. And because these homes also provided a place of worship. And, and th because there were no churches back there, back, back in those days, this is how Christians from different towns and regions, that's how they gathered and worshipped. And today we can also show the same thing by welcoming others to our church. And also by supporting the church 
financially or hosting and helping to lead different fellowships and ministries. You know, church fellowships are built on the hospitalities of its members. The essence of hospitality is to offer what God has given us for the caring of other members. But remember, hospitality always involves doing something or or offering something from us to another person. Now, my wife, Misa, and, and I, you know, we've been in Japan for more than a month now, believe it or not. And even though we may not have opportunities to see all of you, as compared to when we were living in the Bay Area, you know, you, you, you and I, you know, all of us, we are still thinking about each other, caring about each other, and we're praying for one another. That's hospitality. Now, how that dynamic works isn't important. What is important is that we are doing something. We are being hospitable. And Peter reminds us, this is how we love one another. Peter continues and shares another way we are to love one another. Let's look at verse 10 and verse 11. Peter says, just as Each one of us, just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the very grace of God. If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, Let it be from the strength God provides, so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So Peter says another way we are to love one another is to use our gifts. And here Peter is referring to our spiritual gifts. So knowing that the end of all things is near, we are to be earnest in prayer. And we are to love one another. And we we can show that by being hospitable. And now, Peter says to each Christian, whether it's you or me or any church member, we are given at least one spiritual gift. So what are we to do with this spiritual gift that that has now been given to us? We are to use it to serve others. Understand this. Each of you, even if you have just become a Christian recently, each one of you have been given a gift, at least one gift, so that you can serve others. And the Bible says we are to use this as Good stewards. Now, a steward is a person that is entrusted to manage the property of another. So, what that means is that the gift or gifts that we have been that have been given to us, those gifts are entrusted to us by God to serve others. Because every good thing that we have, 
is from God. And it's only by His grace. The things that are given to us and that are entrusted to us, whatever it may be, it is intended only to be used for His purpose. If we fail to use God's gifts that have been given to us, and we don't serve each other, it would mean that we failed being good stewards. And according to Peter, these spiritual gifts can be divided into two categories. Peter says, speaking and serving. Let's look at verse 11 again. Peter says, If anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If God has given you the gift of speaking, and this includes preaching, teaching, sharing the gospel, encouraging, counseling, Peter says we need to make sure that whatever we are speaking about is really God's words. Whatever you're speaking about, be absolutely certain it is really from God. You know, last week we talked about marriage. And we talked about marriage was a union between a man and a woman. It is not between a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, or transgender, or any combination of those things. Marriage is only between a man and a woman. And we also, we also talked about drunkenness. And that it is evil in God's eyes. We talked about idolatry. And this can come in various forms. Whether it's religion or following the opinions and beliefs of, of different people. Some of them social media influencers or celebrities. This is also evil in God's eyes. To be honest, when I taught those things last week, I, I knew that there would be some people who would be offended. They wouldn't like it. And they were probably thinking, those people were probably thinking, how can you call yourself a pastor? You know, m many years ago, when I began, when I began preaching and, and teaching, whether it was a sermon or even a Bible class, I, I would worry. I would worry about what people would think about the things I taught. I worried whether people would like it. Or whether they would accept it. Whether people would lose respect of me because of what I taught. And honestly, there would be nights. I, I would not be able to go to sleep. Knowing what I would be teaching the next day. That it might be offensive or cause controversy even among the members in our church. And this is why so many churches out there, this is why they preach topics rather than preach through the Bible, verse by verse, not skipping any verses throughout the books of the Bible. You know the thought of teaching something and, 
And, and this is not just to our members, but this is to anyone who listens to the messages. The thought of that I would be teaching something that is not from God, but yet calling it God's Word. That thought would worry me so much more than what other people would think of me. Because ultimately, I fear God. I am called by God to preach His Word. And I am accountable to God. Because I could not bear the responsibility of someone, whether it's a church member or anyone else, to live their life based on my opinion. But I know if I speak nothing but God's word, not only can I be in peace, knowing that I preached everything, according to His Word. He will also bless the person who chooses to obey and follow everything that was said. This is why whenever I prepare a sermon or prepare to teach a class or lead a prayer meeting, I make sure I really make sure that I am alert and sober-minded to speak in accordance with God's Word. And those of you who are gifted in speaking, it should be the same. Whether you teach, whether you're sharing the gospel, whether you're giving advice or encouraging or counseling, it should be from God's word. But for some of you, you're not comfortable with speaking. Your gift is serving. Peter says, if anyone serves... Let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. Now, when we are talking about the gift of serving, we are actually talking about a very broad category. Every single Christian Every single Christian has a gift. And if your gift is not speaking, then that means you have at least one gift of serving. Each of us, each and every one of us have a responsibility as Christians to serve the church. Whether it's to help with the Sunday worship, or it, it is to help with the different ministries and fellowships. Now, there's nothing wrong just to watch the sermon or just attend fellowship. And I do encourage all of you to join one of our fellowships, whether it's our prayer meeting, TNF small group, men's fellowship, women's fellowship. But each of you, each of us, we have a responsibility as a Christian to serve others and to serve other brothers and sisters. We all have to remember, and even for myself, we are all accountable to God. And we are to use the gifts that are entrusted to us by God himself to serve others. 
Understand this. The gifts that are given to us is not to serve ourselves or to benefit ourselves. The Bible says that our gifts that are used to serve others are for the benefit of others. Now, often I hear this from church members, whether it's from our church or from other churches. You know, when they're asked to serve, they will say, I am not ready. Or, I can't. I don't have enough skills or enough knowledge of the Bible. Each and every Christian, the Bible says, each and every Christian is given a gift. Each and every Christian are equipped to serve. Maybe you want to share your testimony in, in, in one of our fellowship groups to encourage other brothers or sisters. Perhaps you want to serve in the Sunday worship. You know, we've been praying for a lot of extra help recently. Because God has given all of you. He has given all of you a special gift to serve others. And more importantly, to serve Him. If you are committed to serve, please contact me or any one of our leaders in our church. God wants you to serve so that God can be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. Remember, the end of all things is near. Love one another. Love one another by being hospitable. And with the gifts given to you and given to us, whether it's speaking or serving. Peter says, it is to him, the God that loves each and every one of us. Be the glory and power forever and ever. Church, let each of us glorify him, for he is our God. He is the God who loves each and every one of us. Let's do that. All for his glory. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you so much. And we thank you for the reminder of your words. The time is, is near. Remind us, Lord, that you are the God that controls everything. Nothing is out of your control. Even time itself, you control it. How long we are to live or how short, how long we have before the time ends. Lord, remind us that we are to love and serve one another. Help us to serve with love. And Lord, I know that at times we may struggle with this, but help us with your strength and the grace that you've given to us. Help us to show that love. And we can do this by serving. 
And we can do that today. We need help in the church. Lord, give us the encouragement to step up and to help to serve. And Lord, we also pray that you will give us the strength and, and the desire to want to pray everything according to your will. Knowing that this will glorify you in everything. Lord, help us to do that. And now as we prepare our hearts to bring you our tithes and offering. And I know, again, we've been having to do this virtually. But Lord, we just pray and we thank you that everything that we, that we have, everything that you have given us is only by your grace. So Lord, we thank you. And with this offering that we offer to you at this time, we pray that it will be used so that this gospel, your gospel, can spread and be shared everywhere. Lord, there are a lot of people who are still lost in this world, and they do not know Jesus. So Lord, we pray that you'll give us the boldness also to be instruments of your salvation. Help us to do that. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. You're so good to us. And we know we don't deserve it. But Lord, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everyone, hear and receive the blessing of God. Let's bow our heads. May we go in grace and peace to be the hands and feet of our Lord Jesus, to touch a broken world, that we may bring his comfort to those in any affliction. And may we go in grace and peace to love the world on behalf of Jesus, representing him to a broken world, just as our Lord did. And may we all go in grace and peace to discover the joy of joining the work of Jesus, finding him among the broken of this world. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our worship service today. Have a blessed Sunday. Bye-bye.